As you know, the direct oral anticoagulants, apixaban and rivaroxaban, have been studied in randomized control trials in patients with active cancer for the treatment of acute venous thromboembolism. Guidelines now endorse the use of direct oral anticoagulants in cancer patients, but the safety of direct oral anticoagulants in GI patients remains a concern and low molecular weight heparin remains the treatment of choice to prevent adverse bleeding events. In this short video, we will discuss the purpose and main findings from our article entitled, Bleeding in Patients with Gastrointestinal Cancer Compared with Non-Gastrointestinal Cancer Treated with Apixaban, Rivaroxaban, or Anoxaparin for Acute Venous Thromboembolism. My name is Damon Houghton. I'm an assistant professor and senior associate consultant at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The article we are discussing will appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this manuscript, we present data from the Mayo Clinic VTE registry and examine outcomes of major and clinically relevant non-major bleeding in patients comparing GI malignancies to non-GI malignancies and comparing different anticoagulants. The Mayo Clinic VTE registry includes patients initiated on anticoagulation for acute pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis and follows them prospectively with follow-up visits and surveys to capture recurrent VTE and bleeding events. During the study period, over 3,000 patients were in the registry, among which 1,392 had cancer-associated VTE. Of these patients, 499 had GI cancer. Within the GI cancer category, 272 had luminal GI cancer, and among these, 208 had lower GI and 64 had upper GI malignancies. 176 had pancreatic cancer and 51 had hepatobiliary cancer. We first examined major bleeding and clinically relevant non-major bleeding in apixaban, rivaroxaban, and anoxaparin-treated patients with GI cancer and non-GI cancer. When examining apixaban-treated patients, we found that GI cancer patients had a higher rate of major bleeding compared to apixaban-treated non-GI cancers, and this finding was most pronounced in those with luminal GI malignancies. This finding was in contrast to what we observed with rivaroxaban and anoxaparin-treated patients. Neither of these anticoagulants demonstrated a higher risk of bleeding in GI cancers compared to non-GI cancer patients treated with the same anticoagulant. Upper GI cancers have been a particular concern in rivaroxaban-treated patients, leading to a protocol amendment that excluded these patients from the SELECT-D study. Among eight GI cancer patients treated with rivaroxaban in our study, none had major bleeding compared to four major bleeding events in the 11 patients in the SELECT-D study. We next examined only patients with GI malignancies and compared each anticoagulant to each other. Apixaban had a numerically but not statistically increased risk for major bleeding compared to rivaroxaban and anoxaparin. But when we specifically examined apixaban in luminal GI malignancies, there was a trend towards increased major bleeding compared to rivaroxaban and an increased risk of major bleeding compared to anoxaparin. The takeaway message of this article is that the conclusions from randomized control trials of direct oral anticoagulants, specifically in the subgroup of patients with GI malignancies, deserves further scrutiny. Our study suggests that rivaroxaban may be safer than initially suspected in GI malignancies and that apixaban may not be as safe as expected. Ultimately, our findings need to be confirmed by other observational and prospective studies as randomized controlled trials evaluating these questions are unlikely to occur. On behalf of my co-authors, thank you for your interest in this article, and we hope you will read our article in full in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.